Nothing like a theme song to get you started in the morning. Uh, what a theme it is, too. Yeah. You know, and that's only just a little snippet of it. Yeah. Big shout out to Bradette, the yeah. band, for bringing that together. Local band. And a little suspense. Wait until the end, because we might play it again. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I was uh, on the way here. I, I was wondering what your energy le- level is like today. What is your energy level like? I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah, um, I, I always get excited when we get to do podcasting. Um, but uh, I got my, some family coming in this weekend, and so I've been really excited about them coming because uh, we get to hang out. But you know what's oddly is that I was, like, worried. Um, I was like, oh, God, I hope I don't get sick. Mm. I don't know why I kept thinking that. It's like, oh, geez, that would be terrible. Yeah, you don't want to m- manifest that. Yeah, and but I kind of was. I was kind of being weird about it. Yeah. So I don't know what that was about. Well, actually, I kind of do. I think it's necessarily about my, like, self-destruction. Mm. And somehow I've convinced myself that um, if I don't have adversity, then I got nothing. Well, there is sadly a truth to that. You know, the adversity, what would you say it is? Like pulling back the arrow? You know, there's a little bit of that potential energy something to push push against right and if it is an arrow that like if you let that arrow go it potentially hurt something yourself i mean you could have a little blowback not exactly the best archer Mm -hmm. (laughs) probably more than likely end up poking my own eye out right well with goals that's a really cool thing you know you shoot at a target you aim for a target Mm -hmm. you got the bullseye that you're aiming for but, um, you know, you can't guarantee the bullseye, even if you're a great archer. No. No, you can't. You no. can't guarantee that. Certainly not me. I, I don't even know if I really even, like, aim. I mean, I say, I say aim for it mm-hmm. because it's, like, the most narrowed point of the, the target. Yeah. Right. It's, unless, I guess, you're, like, whatever, playing darts and you got to hit the triple 20. Right, there's there's right. different rules to different strategy, games. Strategy, strategy. Right. So, okay, so let's let's try and go full circle with this, where it's like, okay, so we've got the arrow or the dart, and you're pointing it at it, and it's potential energy. And in my mind, this is something that I'm like doing to maybe because I'm so excited about it. Like I'm, I want it to happen, and I want to have it be the best time ever. Well, at the best of time that it, that it could be, and and so we're you're pointing at it, and I'm like in my head, I'm like, oh, like. It, it, what if it blows back on me? You know, what if I completely miss the target? What if someone like buckles my knee and then the arrow shoots off and it's not even close to the target and then it hits a child or something like that in the audience? Right, like this idea of like, oh, oh no, you know, at the at the bottom of that hill, oh, there's like a a a, a group of people h- hanging out having a fun, and all of a sudden there's like a gas truck that's like on fire. That's like <laughs> this idea inside of my own head that for some reason I constantly need to like add to the destruction calamity yeah calamity and if and if there isn't that if there isn't a piece of that then i'll create it myself so that you know i i i I i think maybe in the terms of like if i was a rebel the only reason i could be a rebel is because there was outside pressure showing me like telling me what i didn't want to have happen so you Hmm. gives gives you an idea a point of reference to be like hey i don't like that and my rebellion starts you know periphery from there yeah uh, or a maverick a maverick kind of ne- needs a uh, something to work against a villain or a the man let's say yeah so okay so you're aiming at the target you can't guarantee the bullseye so despite who you are there's so many different elements at play in you know, nature is working against you on this you know you can't guarantee it but let's talk about all the different factors here before we move on with it. There's the idea of pulling back the bow, potential energy. Also aiming high with velocity, so dreaming big, let's say. Mm-hmm. You dream too big, it's going to land on your head. You're going to shoot straight up. and you know. Uh, so you have all these different factors to get your bullseye, and you're fixated on it. But what if 
if you close your eyes and realize that quiver of arrows is always on your shoulders, you can keep pulling arrows, you know? Don't rapid fire them. Give them, give them a shot at least, you know? Aim, steady yourself, go yeah, for don't, it. Don't be uh, frivolous <laughs> with your arrows. But it, that, I thought that was a really, I don't know, comforting thing to know that you always got another arrow to pull. And I think, yeah, I love that. I, I also think that's great. And uh, the furthermore, um, that's kind of when, if you have the time to stop and think about that, you know, if you, or allow yourself to do that. Cause yeah, exactly. As soon as I start thinking about like, well, that's silly, you know, it's silly to not manifest something, but think that I'm going to destroy something before it begins. Right. And then, and that's when you're like, wow, that's, uh, uh, not a very positive behavior. You know, you could recognize it, try and take a moment to at least like, Hey, there, there are more arrows. Like take that kind of macro view. Yeah, it is definitely a, a, like a zoom out bird's eye view on the situation. Right, like a, like you're not looking at the bullseye anymore. Yeah. Essentially, essentially I'm not looking at w- that that event or that exciting moment. You're you're back a little and you're like, "Oh, okay. Well, do I need to score points in a different way?" Like talk about perspective. I, mean, I think that's the way to to free yourself from that destructive mindset. I'm still trying to relate to you with the destructive mindset actually. The idea that what I'm doing um, feels too safe and I need more destruction is that in in my definition? Yeah, I need I need I need more unpacking from Woody here. I mean, I think that if yeah, I, I, it's kind of a new thought for me to be honest. In the last year, I'd say, um, and just came to a point where. It, nothing is is it's dire it's it's not like um like i'm i'm doing something drastic to to destroy myself i don't want to destroy myself like i i love who i am i love living like i want to continue being the best version of that i can be uh but inherently i feel like there are like i said it's this idea of rebellion where like if i don't have a boundary to push against i get lost a little bit like okay well what do I do? Like what's around me? And I just don't think it always, um, is, and I, I think this is kind of works into my psyche in that emotionally that it's a, it is a very safe place. Like being self-deprecating, being self-destructive, poking fun at yourself. I shouldn't say poking fun at yourself because that's a little bit too light, but is, a very safe place for any individual like as destructive as it is if you're being brooding and pushing people away pushing situations away from yourself then then it's easier to be like oh well it's everybody else's fault like i'm just being me like hey you know whatever sorry if i offend you you know and it's it's isolating and it's simple. It's a lot harder to sit there in front of somebody who maybe is a third party to what's going on and they don't know have a lot of information on you or your emotional state or who you are pointing out and saying, hey, like, how long have you been thinking about that before you told anybody? Have you been going over in that in your own mind for, you know, however long? Allowing, you know, I just... Like I said, I think it's, I, I have this kind of tendency and some of my friends do as well, where there's, there, there needs to be more, like you're always searching for something that there's something greater, but in, 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 on the flip side of that, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result is madness. Like, but those are parallel. Those are the same things to me. Yeah. I would love I have a topic for today, Mm -hmm. new beginnings, because I feel that that's exactly it is the idea of you. We only think because now I'm relating to you. I'm going to say we, we only understand the destructive calamity or the, of what's going on because we're in it. We know this is our, this is what we're used to doing. 
these are our routines, these are our habits that are destructive. So to, to free ourselves from that takes some, needs to take some sort of new beginning, you would think. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think that you know, sometimes that new beginning is as simple as like telling somebody like that's maybe third party to your situation what's going on. That'd be like a, maybe a before starting. Yeah. You know, before starting your new beginning, you go, hey. Um, I guess recognition would probably be recognition. Right, right in there. And then you start this new beginning. So what in nature, what around us can we draw in a comparison? Or Right. What destroys itself to create something anew? I mean, I guess the butterfly is probably the most. Oh, yeah. It's probably the most uh, common example. The metamorphosis. Yeah, the metamorphosis, yeah. Um, yeah, okay. Well, let's go through the metamorphosis quickly. Let's do it. So you start off, every one of us as human beings understand this. We were once a baby in a womb. Totally different being. Our lungs were used to pump liquids once. Yeah. Everyone, every single aquatic. one of us. We yeah. were aquatic creatures. And then for monarch butterflies, there's a transformation. And there, so when they're a caterpillar, milkweed is poisonous for monarch butterflies. All they're doing is eating milkweed every day and so that birds don't eat them. They're eating, you eat poison so that birds t- don't eat you. Brilliant. That's awesome. That's a, only nature could do something like that. <laughs> yeah. And then you get to a point where you enter the, the cocoon stage where you're uncomfortably changing into this new thing you don't know what it is yet. You're leaving behind something you knew. And here you are taking this new form that you, and then it's constricting. And then you break through that. And then you enter your new butterfly stage. Your new world, yeah. The, I think, though, there's like a big difference, though, man, is that I don't, I, I, I couldn't confidently say that you, those beings know that they're going through that phase. Like, no. Yeah. They are an ele- a, a, a manufacturer of, of the environment and of nature and are just, going north because that's where the magnets are you know yeah you almost say like it's almost this divine calling or this yeah. nature calling or this thing that we wish we could tap into because he, yeah i think uh, humans uh, and I, I think we can i think people do tap into that like mm-hmm. uh but the busy mind uh always wants to stay distract com- itself or it stay wa- comfortable yeah it wants to stay comfortable wants to stay inside of its little area you know and and i think that goes for a lot of things um, and definitely mental health is like right in there with that. Yeah. Destructive behavior. And I think maybe you could eat too much milkweed <laughs> or stay in that phase too long and just talk yourself out. You're protecting yourself from a threat that maybe doesn't even exist because you've, you, you've Thwarted, conquered, you've thwarted it. You've conquered that stage. You're in that stage or whatever, but, but now you maintain in that space because it's comfortable and because you've conditioned yourself to think that that's who and what you are. You are only this manifestation, manifestation of nature. And whoever walks around going, I'm a butterfly. Right. <laughs> no one says that. No one, go, you know, I, I would love to say that every day and love myself that much. But really, I'm a worm. Or, you know, we're, 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 pretty, we're pretty wormy, you know. But uh, let's take that analogy and put a pause on it. Maybe move over to um, a sprout poking through the dirt. You know, some new life, some new beginnings happening. I, but that's again like that's just a like a uh, that process. I am I am endlessly blown away by germination and photosynthesis. Oh, it's so I think that crazy. Gets me yeah, in and I could stare at it and think about it. And every time I look at it, I'm like, I feel like it's new. I feel like it's new to me. Every time I look at it, I'm like, well, I get it. That's sunlight, okay, and sugar, uh-huh. <laughs> uh huh. But to me, I'm like, but it's so beautiful like it's so like and summer comes around every season and we're like oh my gosh it's yeah. like you've never seen summer before yeah uh, so the idea of a tree check this out being creative trees are so creative the seed for it to create new to have it to have its new beginning that tree to have its new beginning it's pretty creative it chooses different ways to have their seed desirable and how to spread that seed so you know those maple trees that have the little spinners on them so the, the seed falls and it 
float could carry, could carry by the wind. And then there's also the tree of, of say, an acorn, right, or a chestnut, and it falls down on the ground, and it's desirable for deer. So the deer come along and eat, eat a lot of them. And the animal poops them out, defecates them out. It, it, just enough. How, however, however much, however further away from from its original mother tree. But that's not even enough. The hoof is designed to push the chestnut into the dirt so it can even take root. So not only do you have to get shit out, you gotta get. Sorry, not only do you, yeah, you have to get eaten and then shit out. Yeah, and then stepped on. And then stepped on. That's the one. Yeah. So here you go. All these different things and strength of a little seed. You know, the seedlings life. And whenever I, as a musician, think about creating a song, I'm always thinking about how can I make this more desirable? How can I attract the fawn? You know, how can I attract, or maybe how can I create some sort of mechanism on this song when I release it that it f- goes vast distances and f- and finds its way and plants. Car- yeah, it's carried in the wind, carried in the winds of the internet. And uh, I feel like it's maybe trial and error, a cause and effect, right? I think that. There's probably a, 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 a lot of trees that failed. I could imagine there's a lot of trees that failed along the way. Maybe there's species that of trees that are becoming extinct right now as we. T- I would and 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 yeah, I think there's probably an innumerable amount and combination of gen, you know genetic code that has been forgotten or lost or altered in the name of whatever environmental standard or environmental factors are kind of at play yeah i mean i i uh i don't i don't can we get woody from the future to help us out here and make sure what we just said is all accurate we need to fact check this future what? hey woody from the future here uh instead of me going into a long-winded explanation uh, uh about what photosynthesis is and some kind of biochemical jargon let's just all agree that it's all magic future what? New beginnings, right? We have new beginnings here. And you become the butterfly. But now the thing is, the butterfly has its own journey. It has its own... It's now vulnerable to a totally different... To me, it's a completely different creature. Like, whole... with, with Yeah, exactly. Like, a whole completely different life path and purpose. It's... And, and, and I don't know if that... Like, that that's the most drastic kind of version of metamorphosis you know like you go in as one thing and come out completely anew and but in in the in humans like we don't have the we can't change like that you know the the the, the metamorphosis is is spiritual or in my case like physical i mean uh you, you can it's the whole idea change your hair change your life grow that hair out and then decide that you want to change and then make be like this is how i'm gonna do it and then shave it all off yeah to get closer to whatever it is that you are are drawing your power from right and the thing is when you do those things there is a spiritual change that's a new and there are a lot of new things and um when you do change Sometimes it's hard for your community of people around you to, to accept that change. Especially if that is like with your, a spiritual change, not everyone is going to understand what that means. You can tell everyone, but I'm sure only a few people would be able to maybe even see it, let alone understand it. And it's another interesting thing about like the physical metamorphosis versus the spiritual is that they're like it takes so much more strength to continue to be able to represent that change without really any identifiable like tactile markers. Right. We need some way to, to measure it. We need to measure it. In yeah. Some you got to like put a unit to it. What happens when there's a new beginning? What role do we play as stewards of that? What, if this was a gardening thing as a, as a gardener, how do what role do I play in new life? Right? What is what is my what am I commissioned to do? As soon as I put that seed in the ground, do I have some sort of responsibility as a gardener? What intent 
that I even have of that. I mean, if you're going to put a seed in the ground, you're like, sow that seed. And then once, and let's draw one more comparison to that is seeds are conversations. And I wish that people would have conversations again, not arguments. The idea that what you plant in a conversation, right? You have to carry that through. I like that. That's really great. Yeah, and I mean, I, uh, hmm. I, I think the whole idea of like the new beginning with the gardening and what we're talking about the butterfly and it's so funny because we're kind of nestled on the precipice of spring right now right yes. now right now i mean it's uh it's coming it hasn't been a very harsh winter it, it was i mean we got definitely got it for a bit but in terms of the renewal i think that this area and is gonna see change as it does every single year um is going to be just as remarkable as it was last time. You know, just as remarkable as when I stare at a plant and say, how do you grow? How do you grow? Yeah. Right. It's the, yeah, I look at it with the same amazement that I do every year where just like when I look at the mountains every day and I'm like every day that I can see them. And I think how many ancient humans have looked at that and been like, yep, that's pretty sweet. Like that's big. Don't know if I'm ever going to get there, but pretty beautiful looking at it. And little of us want to see the new beginnings of a mountain. That's a little destructive. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but we like to witness its glory from a distance. It's those kind of things. So the butterfly has this calling to, to fly south. Every monarch butterfly ends up in the same place. They all end up in Mexico. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. And then there's one tree. The Great Migration. <laughs> now, uh, landing the plane on the conversation is this. Woody, you're, you're always the butterfly. You're, you're a butterfly in a different state. So you are a butterfly. I, I like to, I mean, I think that's wonderful. Uh, butterflies are beautiful. <laughs> and, and they if, if, play an incredibly important role. And even if you went reverse metamorphosis, you went from butterfly back to worm one day. You wake up, you're like, wait, wait, hey, hey. Come on. Would that mean that I get to turn back into a butterfly? Because well, it that, kind of seems like it might be a bit of a painful experience. Again, to go through, because you've been through it once. Ooh, maybe you'll take metamorphosis as a new, um, in a new way. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I know that we just landed, but maybe we're just going to skip off and touch back into the sky there for a quick sec. Um, if you like... Would you, like, let's say you did turn back and you know, all of a sudden it was like, you've completed your journey, Des, as the beautiful butterfly you are. For, you, now you have to turn back. And you're like, no, like, being inside of that cocoon prison was the most agonizing thing I've ever experienced. Or even eating the poison all my life. Yeah. To, to even wait for the moment for the cocoon stage to start, which is the next agony. <laughs> and then as the butterfly, there, yeah. I'm sure there's the, the agony of, Finding your way. You're like always having to be subjected to the wind. <laughs> like, well, I guess this is where I'm going now. <laughs> yeah, and okay. so fragile. Yeah. So fragile. All kids always running around trying to catch you with a net. <laughs> <laughs> but that, I don't know. I feel like that's a beautiful thing is yeah. not getting caught up in that. Um, seek the new beginning. And in whatever way it manifests, ooh, uh, Remember, you're always, you're always the butterfly. You've already reached that. You can live that reality now. And that's the spiritual journey. If you can come full circle with that and take that with you, it's like having the superpower. Like maybe a little perspective. Because I think the superpower doesn't save you from the inevitability of life. But at least you can spread a little hope and joy along the way. All right, my friends. Sayonara. We can talk about love, talk about the future.